Yeah. 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 Thing to do back in those days, and uh, in fact, uh, when we used to, uh, played most of the shows leading up to the Strength album, we played that song as an opener. And uh, one particular night, we were played at the Hammersmith Palais in London, which was a fairly famous gig in those days. And uh, in that early part of the 80s, we most of our gigs were played then without crash barriers in front of the stage, and uh, crash barriers start to come in when. Health and safety started to come into the room. <laughs> and uh, we didn't like the barrier. When we used to come on to the stage, I used to like to get hold of somebody's hand in the audience. And it felt like it was an electric shock would run right away from the stage to the back of the venue when that human contact was made. And when that was taken away from us, we found it very difficult to get in the mood for gigs in the same way. And so we used to come back to the barriers. We used to carry these boards around with us and we'd take them and put them on the side of the stage and lean them across the barriers so that we could walk across the gap and get hold of the audience for the gig. Now, uh, it was all great in practice until one day. We did the sound check in London and we put all the barriers up so I could walk across and touch the audience before the gig. And it was all great and we did the sound check. And I went upstairs to the dressing room and the lights came down and we let the audience in and everyone stood at the tip of this barrier. There were some nice boards going across. But unfortunately, this guy from the Greater London Council came in with his clipboard and he, had to, he was doing his checklist whether the gig could go on. He saw these boards, he went, sorry, those boards across the barriers, across the board, they've got to go. Otherwise, there's no gig. So uh, all the roadies went down in the pit and they took the boards out. And then the, the guy said, okay, the gig can go ahead. He's got his board out, tick, the gig is on. Now, that was great as well. But the fact was, nobody told me in the dressing room. <laughs> so, oh. we were starting with the majority of the song I'd just played, and it was always, the idea was to start in the pitch black, and the guitars would start, and then the lights would come on, and the drums came in. So we go down, and the stage is completely black, and I can see the audience, and I think, I'll just get a little touch, get an electric shock. <laughs> so I go straight to the front of the stage. Boof! <laughs> flat on me back in the pit. I'm staring up and I can see all the faces looking down at me. It was very surreal, I can tell you. Put upside down at your own gig. <laughs> anyway, I can hear that it was I can hear Dave Sharpie at the guitar and just go. <laughs> then I get up some security guard got hold of me and threw me up on the stage like a fish. <laughs> out of water at first, and I got onto the microphone, the lights came on, and it was all raging, and I was like, where am I? <laughs> I saw a microphone, I better sing! <laughs> if you can get a hold of a bootleg of this gig, you hear the opening lyrics of the song go, <laughs> I didn't have a clue where I was and what song I was singing. Anyway, I got through that song. And then the second song that was gonna have was gonna shout to the devil off declaration. It was gonna have a big movie start and, I was, and it did. All the drones went down, the spotlight came on. And I was gonna start it off with a harmonica intro all dramatically. There I was in the spotlight, ready to go. And I got my harmonica out of my back pocket. And I went into the mind of... <laughs> <laughs> it was at that point I realized it had been in my back pocket when it fell in the pit and I squashed it. <laughs> So the next song, I wasn't singing it, Dave Sharp, our guitarist was singing it, so I'll get my electric guitar out and I'll be get relaxed and I'll get back into the gig. So I go to the back and I, I wait, I'm going to jump off the riser when Twist comes in with the drums. So I get up, and the drums come in and I jump off the riser. Bloody roadies have forgot to plug my guitar in, haven't they? <laughs> so the reviews came out the next day. <laughs> They said, Mike Peters, wow, he can't sing, he certainly can't remember the lyrics. Terrible harmonica player, and what a rubbish guitarist he is as well. <laughs> anyway, this is the song I was going to play, if we'd been plugged in. And it was also on that first radio session we did on the journey to Strength. This is my favourite arm song ever, it's called One Step Close to Home. In 
1975, when the kid was on the line, he felt no pain, cause there was none. He would bend in the wind, taking anything, life's been roses, and it was alright until he fell and cut his hand. He just could not understand. He went away, playing pretense for defense, all playing in the sands. Said that's alright, the harder it fights, I'm one step closer to home. The deeper it fights, I'm one step closer to home. You can tie my hands or whip my back, I can't give in to the sky turns black. I may get lost, I'm one step closer to home. Oh yeah, he ran, he tried to drive a line, left his bags behind. Said he lost them, he said that's okay, I get money to smile. A businessman, I just gave them right back again. I got no need for device, disguise, or for compromise. So that's alright, the tougher it gets, I want to stay closer to home. The more I swear, I want to stay closer to home. You can tell me. Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin. <laughs> See, uh, when we were making the album, we were making it in the same studio. And Jimmy, remember Jimmy Page had a band with Paul Rogers called um, The Firm? Yes. And well, he was mixing a live album at the same time we were recording Strength. And one day he walked into the studio where we were to check out the alarm. And uh, he went into the live area where all the guitars were. And he picked up the guitars. And we immediately hit record. And we'll get a bootleg of Jimmy Page on the <laughs> The guitar. And then he, he invited us up to the control room to go and see the firm and then hear their new album, it was a live album. And uh, so we uh, kind of knocked on the door and there was no answer, so we went down. But Dave Sharp on guitar was pretty persistent, so he went up again and he knocked on the door and then it opened, a crack appeared. And it was Jimmy Page and he said, 
and the next minute out came this bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> and he said, if you want to come in here, you can stay, but you can't leave until you've finished the bottle. <laughs> so Dave Sharp took the bottle and then he went. <laughs> and we never saw him for five days. <laughs> he was in there drinking as many bottles of Jack Daniels you can imagine that Jimmy Page and Let's Have You could afford, and that was a lot. <laughs> That's why I drink water to this very yeah. day. <laughs> but when, when Dave came out of the studio, he was kind of a, he wasn't in shape to sing. We only had one day to go to finish the album, so he couldn't quite sing the song at the time, so it made it, had to wait its turn till the Ida Hurricane record. <laughs> anyway.